advertisements, JKA ads, JKA that thing you see everywhere all of the time. No matter where you go and no matter what you do, ads can and will find you, Brian. That is a certainty in life, along with death and taxes and that thing when the waiter says enjoy your food and you say I love you too, senpai. In video games, the beautiful, magical world of escapism and wonder that is video game, sadly it, no exception. Video games have been tainted with the foul odor and slimy snail trail of product placement and advertising for many a fortnight. Pun intended, son, unfriended. But is all advertising in video games bad? Are some ads for good and not just greed? How did we get here? And where the hell are we going, Brian? Dude, you're driving, just hand me your phone. Multitasking is not one of your starting attributes, Brian. The year is 1978 AD. Advertising. Scott Adams releases Adventureland, a text-based game with no graphics, and even worse, no kill streaks. And yet, Adventureland holds one of the earliest examples of in-game advertising, an ad for Scott's next, upcoming, even sexier game, Pirate Adventure. Ooh, shiver me timbers. <laughs> Look out, Sea of Thieves. It's got, it's got me like, yo, Microsoft, Sea of Thieves nuts can fit in your mouth. I'm sorry. Okay, so it's the 80s and product placement is already in f***ing everything. But also, PP is starting to show up in the world of video games as well, primarily in the form of the advert game, which is exactly what it sounds like. A video game built solely around advertising a single product or company. One of the first advert games is in 1983 with Tapper prominently featuring Budweiser and sold to be played in bars, but nobody really gives a shit about the product placement because they're drunk, but also the game is just really fun. So fun that a year later the game was rebranded as Root Beer Tapper and sold in regular arcades for children too, so now all the kids are like, Hey bud, why'd you put this in W, man? I'm shit hammered. Now the big video game crash of 1983 would slow things down for a bit, but the late 80s and 90s saw a huge resurgence of advert games. Talking about Donald Land over in Japan in 1988, because over there, Ronald McDonald is often known as Donald McDonald, which <laughs> I am just, I, I am, I am just, an, I am, I am, I am just, <laughs> I am just enamored by that. Capcom publishes <laughs> In 1990, who, while not as immediately recognizable as our beloved Don Bon Dovi over here, Noid was once the iconic mascot of none other uh, than Domino's Pizza. Fun fact about Yo Noid is that it's actually just a reskin of this Japanese game that I will let my anime fans help me pronounce that's about a ninja boy who rescues children who have been kidnapped. Now, I don't know about y'all, but when I get kidnapped, first thing I do is order Domino's Pizza. Cool Spot drops in 1993, and honestly, for a game where its entire lore and existence is solely based on the red spot on the 7-Up logo, <laughs> whoa. The game gets pretty good reviews and people actually kind of like it. There's a closet behind me in this apartment and I almost just fully fell into it. Chex Quest drops in 1996, bundled with certain boxes of Chex cereal and is clearly just a non-violent reskin of Doom, which is kind of genius. But, disclaimer, if you have a phobia of rice, corn, or wheat, this game may as well be Doom. What the f***, Brian? I'm going to free! Why did you make me play the wheat level, Brian? You're a toad! You've always been a toad, and you're gonna die a toad, Brian. Pepsi Man drops in 1999, only in Japan, unfortunately. Shout out Donald, and I am i couldn't even begin to tell you what Pepsi Man is advertising, you know? I'm looking around this whole screen, and I am just lost. There are so many of these advert games that I'm sure some of you remember that just kept going and going into the early 2000s. Kind of goes without saying, but obviously these companies are dropping advert games to try and boost sales of their product, right? The question is, is it actually working? The answer, much like my vision through these shitty glasses, is a little unclear, but it seems to be kind of a case-by-case -case type deal. Chex claims that Chex Quest boosted their sales by 295% at the time, which kind of makes sense because you're getting a free game bundled with a box of cereal, and that game is basically doomed. I mean, that's super smart. But then in the case of something like Pepsi Man, where you have to go out of your way and purchase a game with your hard-earned money that is a literal walk advertisement yeah you wonder why that didn't sell that well Einstein maybe stick to handing police officers cans and fixing all of our problems Wow does that guy ever shut up or what hi 
I'm Jakey, Jakey, and Jakey, Attorneys, Attorneys at, at law. law. Have you fallen victim to a crappy internet browser? Does that crappy ass browser fail to meet your needs while gaming? Do you ever, do you ever think about me, Linda? Please pick up the phone. I just want to talk to the children. If you're like me, you love to have a bunch of stuff going on in the background while you're gaming. But oopsie doopsie, mama made a poopsie. That Google Chrome web browser you're using to watch that video in the background sure is hogging up a lot of your CPU and RAM's power levels. What the heck? And now you're getting frame drops and lag in that fast-paced anime game you're always playing and won't shut the hell up about? Now that just will not do. Your Honor objects sustained over rule. Go to jail, get a job. Off. Enter Opera GX, a browser with the ability to limit the amount of CPU and RAM usage that you're willing to let your browser hog up while gaming so it doesn't slow you down. A browser with the ability to limit network bandwidth usage as well to help eliminate performance issues in online games. All useful tools placed within the GX control panel near the top left of the browser. With Opera GX, you are entitled to all sorts of wonderful customization, including, but not limited to, deliciously tasteful themes and fully customizable color combinations along with the option for light, dark, and auto modes. But let's be real, just put it in dark mode, everyone knows dark mode is the best. All options located within the easy setup button in the top right corner. Speaking of corners, the GX corner in the top left is your one-stop shop for all things video games. Oh, you wanna keep track of upcoming game releases? Oh, you wanna stay up to date on current gaming news? Oh, you wanna see all the best current gaming deals? Oh, you want an updated and curated list of available free games to download for free, AKA what us lawyers call a good deal, buy, 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 sell, sell, sell. If you download Opera GX using my special link down below, your GX Corner will also have the exclusive feature of showing my recent 12 uploads, so you'll always be up to date when I upload a new video like every 10 months or so. If you think Jakey, Jakey, and Jakey, Attorneys, Attorneys at, at Law can help remedy your web browser problems today, use my link below to download Opera GX. Thanks to Opera GX for sponsoring this video, and I guess now we'll get back to whatever the hell Dr. Dumbass is talking about this time. The oh, history of uh, video games, history of Bakugans. <laughs> I ought to sue his ass, throw him in the slam house. But what if your PP isn't just in a blatant advergate? What if you sneak your PP into like an actual legit fully priced real video game well that started happening, like, a lot in the 90s and 2000s. Sports games are a huge one, with games like Madden, FIFA, 1080, and Tony Hawk all having relevant product placement to each kind of sport. Same with racing games like Need for Speed or Gran Turismo showcasing real car brands and real car parts. Same with Croc 2 advertising fucking little guys. I should have just said Crocs. It would have been way better if I just said Crocs. Damn it, Brian. Thanks to the scrap! So far, all of my non advert game examples have been pretty tame, and there's actually a solid argument that that product placement could actually add to the immersion of that type of game. But then it starts to get a little trickier. Crazy Taxi drops in 1999 and is one of the first blatant examples of product placement in a non-adver game, non-sports, non-racing game, but the immersion argument is still potentially there. Yeah, brands like Pizza Hut and KFC pop up in this game a lot, but also, if you were a taxi driver, you would probably see brands like KFC or Pizza Hut. Like, as a passenger, it's kind of hilarious to imagine getting into a cab just to go to a Pizza Hut by yourself, like, just get the pizza delivered, but you get the point. Crazy Taxi marks a point in time, I think, where the immersion argument behind product placement in video games really only does get trickier and trickier. I'm just gonna run through some examples real quick and you let me know what you think down in the comments, gamers. Make sure to ring that bell and be notified once a year. In Sonic Adventure 2, Sonic's shoes are officially soap branded shoes. You know, like the shoes that you put on, you can like slide down rails and get all soapy and shit. Hi, go off, that's kinda hard, Fucking Shadow got the foams on. In Enter the Matrix, apparently the only beverage that exists in this universe is Powerade maybe because it comes in green and can just kind of fit the whole matrixy vibe. I got this. Splinter Cell Chaos Theory, a game all about remaining undetected and slinking around in the shadows. Ooh, you know what would really help you to remain undetected is if you just f***ing reek the Max body spray and Airwaves gum and your Nokia phone was like <laughs> That last game is notable because it was one of the first to utilize dynamic advertising, meaning that it uses the internet to change what ads you see in game depending on your time of day and region. Ubisoft was one of the first to do this type of chicanery, but definitely not the last. Thanks Ubisoft. Soft, I love you. Please don't hurt my family, please. It was Brian. Brian did it. And surprise, surprise, guess what other companies started doing this in the 2000s as well? EA? No. 
not our EA. Couldn't be precious EA. Madden, Need for Speed, even the skate games got in on it with different dynamic ads appearing on like billboards and buses and shit. But my favorite example by far is in Burnout Paradise where in 2008 they ran political ads for Obama. Hey kids, when you're not too busy T-boning your fellow Americans at 200 miles per hour, vote for me dude, I'll put f***ing beer in the vending machines. Now going back to that whole but does it add to the immersion debate, that conversation really only does get trickier and trickier as gaming grows bigger and bigger. Obviously when it's an adver game that has like the f***ing king himself on the front of the box, that's one thing. Like you know what you're getting into if you buy that. But when the king shows up in your $60 game that you just purchased with your hard earned paycheck, that hits a little bit different. I'm not saying it's always necessarily bad. Like it could be funny or whatever, but it is different. Like when I skip school to drop $60 on Uncharted 3 and I boot up the multiplayer just to be assaulted by the smell of Subway bread reeking up my home, you know exactly what I'm talking about. That Subway bread has a very specific fucking tang to it. Like it's, like it's pH balance is all fucked up. Alan Wake is a better example for us to discuss as far as the immersion shit goes, okay? It's a single player, offline, Remedy made game, okay? I love Remedy. Max Payne is like my favorite game ever. Now, in theory, having brands like Energizer and Verizon show up in your realistically portrayed world is potentially fine, especially when a main mechanic of the game is using batteries for your flashlight. But when these very specific ads repeat themselves over and over, and you get a f***ing achievement for sitting down and watching an entire ad on a fake TV in a fake universe, Alan, wake the f*** up. We're going back to GameStop. We're returning this game and we're buying Yahtzee. I don't give a shit anymore. We're getting Yahtzee for the 360. I think an argument for immersive PP with more solid ground is the Yakuza series. Now, I've never played these games, but based on what I've watched and read, they seem to incorporate a wide variety of Japanese brands in a much more subtle and potentially world-building way. And I'm not trying to get preachy and say you should feel one way or the other about this. I'm just saying, I think if you're gonna argue for immersion, there's more of a substantial argument to be made with this game series. Versus Kojima just straight up putting brands like Doritos and Mountain Dew and Axe Body Spray into the Japanese version of Peace Walk. With his reasoning being to keep things fresh and to surprise players like, okay dude, how about you focus on surprising us with another two-dimensional character with giant boobs that breathes through her skin and not a f***ing ad for Ride with Norman Reedus Sundays in a game where I'm supposed to be taking Mr. Reedus seriously as Sam Porter Bridges, get it? His last name is Bridges because he's gonna bridge together the f***ing US. I don't mean to just roast Kojima, okay? I own every game, I have art books, I have a huge crush on Sniper Wolf, not that one, the one with the polygonal setup. But come on, if you even think about going in the comments and arguing that the inclusion of Monster Energy or Ride with Norman Reedus Sundays adds to the immersion of this universe, or is a fourth wall breaking move from an auteur you just don't understand. Alan, wake the f up! The Patriots are behind all of this! The lolly lule lule lolly lule! But you wanna know what really changed advertising in video games? mobile games. That shit done went and changed the entire fucking galaxy. Because if you release a free to play game and you run ads on it and that game does even a little bit well, you could potentially make a lot of money. The Flappy Bird guy claimed he was making up to 50k a day when that game was blowing up and then he hated his life from all the mean messages and attention he got, which is really sad. And a lot of the time, the ads in these free mobile games are just for other mobile games that 90% of the time don't even fucking exist exist or are just like really weird or like really sexual like an off-brand ass Costco render of Spongebob like on an island with like Peter Griffin and there's some shitty text-to-speech that's like grandma got away with it again no one can get past level five without coming <laughs> That's, no, no, that's, a, that's, that's a different type of game. We all know what we all know what type of game I'm talking about. Fucking. Make sure to choose your color of cum. And then surprise, surprise, the free-to-play model makes its way over to consoles with games like Fortnite, constantly having different promotions or events like the trailer premiere for Tenet or an Ariana Grande concert. And a lot of that stuff is actually pretty cool and like well integrated. And because the game is free nobody really cares that much. Like credit where it's due to Fortnite, everybody kind of wins. Well, except the children who are preyed upon with their marketing to spend money on their mommy's credit card, but you know, Spider-Man. But here's the kicker. First of all, 
I'm going to take this off because it's really hot and it's like impossible to see anything through these. So I'm just going to go soccer mom style for the rest of the video. You know your favorite companies, you know your best friends? Well, they started incorporating those same business practices and the free to play model of in game microtransactions and advertising in not so free video games, aka $60 fully priced video games. Like at one point, NBA 2K and UFC 4 had straight up mid roll ads that played during down time or even interrupted gameplay you know like a mobile game does with the peter griffin grandma situation also 2k assaults you with microtransactions like every five seconds so maybe just don't play that game and just go play basketball outside like yeah yeah and unlike the subtle plug that scott adams did back in 1978 modern games love to remind you that their hot sexy new game is out too and you should really go out and buy that one but when that adds even one step or loading screen between me and getting to play the game that I actually want to play, my patience runs out faster than Brian on track and field day. And let me tell you, that kid is dumb as hell, but he is quick. Earlier this year, Sony and Microsoft both announced that they're streamlining the process of integrating ads into free-to-play games on their respective marketplaces, similar to how ads are integrated into games on your iPhone through the App Store. Now, in an absolute best case scenario of how these ads get implemented, hardworking game devs getting more money for the blood, sweat, and fears they dump into their indie game or whatever while ads are subtly placed on billboards or benches or used in like a immersive world building way like the Yakuza series that's fine in theory but after going over everything I've gone through I think we all know that's probably not how it's gonna shake out and not to be a depressing Darren but if history repeats itself all signs point towards AAA companies slowly inserting more and more ads in their paid AAA games too, because again, look at how much f***ing money ads make on mobile games. You seriously think those AAA bigwig execs aren't noticing that shit? Have you heard the way these lizard people talk? They already tried doing it with those sports games. It's just like microtransactions. Years ago, nobody thought they would ever put that shit in a fully priced $60, or I guess now, $70 paid game like Gran Turismo 7, but money talks. And unfortunately, Activision Blizzard and EA and all these companies learned to speak money on Duolingo because in 2021, Activision Blizzard made over $5 billion on microtransactions alone. Billions with a B and an I and a T for Ted. And just like with microtransactions, gamers are gonna push back and complain, but at the end of the day, a lot of you, mostly children probably, which is really unfortunate that children are frequently the ones preyed upon with this shit, a lot of us stupid gamers are still gonna buy the fucking thing because the day I can't live out my Steph Curry power fantasy is the day I alley-oop off this mortal coil, so help me God. So yeah, that's where we're at now. Not to end this video on a depressing note, but I guess my only real message that you should maybe take away from this is don't pre-order games just don't I've done it you've done it we've all wanted to play that game the second it comes out but honestly just wait wait even an hour to see if a the game even runs properly like it was advertised to or B doesn't have a bunch of shitty business practices implemented that completely ruin the experience people should be paid for their incredibly hard work 100% but also as a consumer when you buy something you should know what you're paying for right like when you watch a video for free on YouTube it would probably make sense for that person to run an ad on that video to make them some money so they could buy cool stuff like a jet ski right like you would want them to buy a jet ski even though they live in the city and they definitely couldn't afford or fit a jet ski and maintain that jet ski right you would want that right okay happy we could get on the same page brian i i appreciate that man thanks again to opera gx for sponsoring this video and jakey jakey and jakey attorneys, attorneys at, at law thanks you for watching this video Godspeed and a good night and Godspeed. Linda, please call me using your cell phone. I really want to talk to the kids.